People think glass is fragile because they don't work with glass. Glass is the toughest stuff in the universe. Trust me, I work with it. But yes, of course, if you look at it funny, it breaks. There's that. <laughs> it's temperamental. <laughs>well, the minute I tried glass, I knew that this was the thing for me forever. It was literally a moment where it, it felt like the clouds parted and angels came out and announced that this was my future. It was so abrupt and sudden and blissful. And at that moment, I couldn't ever be stopped. So whenever I had a critique, I didn't care what they said because I was in love. It was partly because the material is beautiful and I wanted to look at it, but mainly I think it was because it was a technically oriented process. It, it involved a lot of hard work, which apparently, I didn't know it at the time. I think if you told me, I would have said like, oh, hard work, no thank you. But I subconsciously craved it. When I switched majors from painting to glass, my teacher, I remember him saying, how can you possibly know? And now, as a teacher, when my students say things like this, I think, how can you possibly know? All I can say is, I knew, and I definitely knew. I start my process with some sort of a sketch. You know, I don't have the idea first. I work from the little drawings towards an idea that emerges as I'm working. I do have a large archive of imagery that I refer to, and I do try very hard to let these um, elements sort of join together naturally without me forcing them. So I generate tons and tons of material. I don't know how much stuff I have to make before I actually make a piece. The beached whale, I did an actual drawing, a pencil drawing of a beached whale, and then I did, I don't know, 250 Photoshop documents based on it that were all different. I'm looking for combinations of imagery where the figure is starting to be engaged in doing something ambiguous yet universal. So it has to have more than just a figure. It's, it's about the interplay of the figure in the background. There's a wide range of um, feelings I get when I have put things together in compositions that may or may not be future pieces. Sometimes I get so excited that I have to like take a walk. I cut the glass in a very old-fashioned way. I use a little steel wheel cutter that makes a score in the glass, and this agitates the atoms, and then you can crack the glass apart. I further shape the glass on a grinder. It's a router-type grinder. And then once the glass is um, cut to the appropriate shape, I think about sandblasting it. The sandblasting process for me started out as a very important aspect of the design. But now that I'm into engraving, I just use it to prepare the surface. So I sandblast the glass and that roughs it up a little bit, makes it look a little frosty and cloudy. Once that has taken place, I bring the glass upstairs and I start to think about engraving it. I should say at this point that I am using a type of hand-blown glass known as flash glass. Flash glass is characterized by having a very thin veneer of bright color. It's made uh, as a bubble in a hot shop, the way they make any type of hot glass. And it's basically a giant bubble that they smooth out into a sheet. 
but it has this layer of color on it and that can be removed. I draw a pattern on it with a magic marker, a permanent marker, and then I go into the glass with tools that um, are engraving tools. They, they would remind most people of dentist drills, especially in how they sound. And they make lines. All these techniques have been around forever, but what I do that's different is I do all of them all at once, always. One of the techniques that I like working with is carving into the glass. That's actually not something that is historically typical of this medium. It's something I've really investigated myself. So I'm carving into one layer of glass to reveal another color that comes out. And that is physically demanding, but not in anything that going to a gym is going to help you with. The gym is here and it is physically exhausting on your forearm to do that and your my fingers get tired. I, I fantasize about hand massages. Or that look. Or that look. And then I stack the glass. So if I have a sheet of red on clear, I might also have a piece that's cut to the exact same dimensions that's blue on clear. And I make a sandwich. And that way I have the potential for red, blue, clear, black paint. And there's a type of yellow that is known as silver stain. So I can get a full range of colors just by stacking red and blue together. I was never interested in the history of stained glass when I began. I was in fact rebellious against the idea and maybe it was protection because the history of painting really messed me up when it came to painting. So if stained glass had no history, that was fine by me. I consider them to be stained glass windows even though they're in light boxes. They're perfectly fine functioning stained glass windows made out of glass, inspired by the glass, intended to perform maybe the way a window performs in a spiritual setting. I'm not a religious person, but I understand the function of glass in a church or a synagogue or where whatever spiritual building it's installed in is to create radiant light, which has an effect on people that isn't just intellectual. I think all artists want their work to be enlightenment embodied, but it can't be because it's not stained glass, so there. Stained glass shines colored light onto your body. It's a powerful experience.